why is the having so important? Well, it comes down to supply and uh, supply and demand dynamics, right? So I want you to think about the fact that right now Bitcoin is trading more or less sixty two, sixty three thousand dollars. There's a certain amount of demand that that has Bitcoin floating around sixty three thousand. That means that there's buy demand to support sixty three thousand. Now remember, there's six new six point two five new Bitcoin coming into the world, and someone's willing to grab that. Do you understand? Someone's willing to hold on to that, grab it at 63 and hold on to it. All right. Or the miners might hold on to the Bitcoin or they might sell the Bitcoin. And if they sell this new Bitcoin that just came into existence, someone is willing to buy it at 63. If that were not the case, we wouldn't be around 62, 63. So there's demand at 62, 63. But on Saturday, the amount that becomes available for the demand that is existing for, for, for 900 Bitcoin, the same amount of money is now only going to have access to 50% of it. Croesus BTC here has old numbers here where he's saying if the demand, if the money coming into Bitcoin to grab new Bitcoin is roughly 900 million. It's supporting the Bitcoin price with 900 million on average demand per, per, per period, per day, it would have you. If the supply all of a sudden drops to 450 and you still have the same demand, if the demand doesn't change and the supply drops, it automatically creates a supply crunch. And so the having will tend to always have an upward pressure on the Bitcoin price. All right. The only way there would be equilibrium is if the demand and the supply got cut in half simultaneously. This almost never happens. All right. The demand for Bitcoin stays every single day around the same amount and the supply instantly gets cut in half. That higher demand, that that demand which doesn't move or doesn't get affected now starts chasing a smaller number of Bitcoins, causing an upward pressure.